Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. It's time for this year's roundup of the best and worst all mineral sunscreens for your face. Now as you know sunscreen is one of my favorite topics to talk about here on YouTube. I 100% believe that it is the number one anti-aging tool that we have in our arsenal to keep our skin looking younger, longer. And I feel like the younger that you start using sunscreen, the better, but that you're never too old to start. So if you're my age in your early to mid 50s and you've never used a sunscreen before, I encourage you to start using one every day. As I mentioned, this video is all about mineral sunscreen. So that means they either have zinc oxide or a combination of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Here in the United States, the FDA has approved 16 different sunscreening ingredients. Of those, two are mineral. So the other um, 14 I won't be talking about. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with chemical sunscreens. In fact, they can be and are very, very effective. It's so much easier to find a chemical-based sunscreen that works, especially under makeup, than a mineral one. But I have super reactive, super sensitive skin, and so when I put on a chemical sunscreen, I feel a burning sensation on my face, particularly around my eyes. So if you have ever put on a sunscreen and you felt a hot, burning sensation around your eyes, uh, mainly it's because of the chemicals in the sunscreen. So if you were to switch that out to an all mineral based sunscreen, you wouldn't have that burning anymore. And if that is going to help you to use a sunscreen daily rather than not use a sunscreen, then I encourage you to try a mineral sunscreen. So the reason that I spend so much time and so much money um, looking at mineral sunscreens and testing them is because it is very, very difficult to formulate an all mineral sunscreen that can be worn on its own because they do mainly give the white cast or they leave your skin super shiny. They can also be heavy and greasy feeling. They also don't tend to work well under makeup and so finding one or two or three to recommend is very difficult and I have to tell you again this year after testing over 25 different sunscreens that I still haven't found one that is perfect uh, on its own and under powder and under liquid makeup. One of the things that I did want to mention though is uh, last year when I did my testing I was using probably more sunscreen than the average person uses but not as much as is recommended to get the full SPF coverage that is on the label. So the average person, when they go to put on sunscreen, they pretty much put on a pea size amount or the amount that fits on the tip of their finger. And when they take that and smear it all around their face, you can get pretty much any one of these sunscreens to look good. Unfortunately, what you're getting using that amount is probably less than 50%, maybe around 25% of what the SPF value is on the label. That means you're only getting 25% of that SPF 50, so you're getting something like an SPF 12.5. I just want everyone to be aware of what they're getting when they're putting their sunscreen on. So I put out a bunch of sunscreens here on this piece of paper just to demonstrate what it is. So this is like a pea size amount that a normal person would use on an average everyday basis. This is a quarter of a teaspoon of sunscreen. This is pretty much what the FDA's formula equates into if you're putting sunscreen just on your face, okay? So if you're doing just your face, a quarter, whoa, look at them run, a quarter teaspoon is what you should be using. And that is way more than double this. If you're doing your face, including your neck, your ears, your chest, then it jumps up to a half a teaspoon. Some people I've even read on other blogs that a full teaspoon is what's recommended. This is what I use for this year's testing. Using it at this rate, it's very, very difficult to find something that will rub in and look good and can be worn on its own and that will work under makeup. But I did find a few things, so now after that epic introduction, let me show you the brands that I did like, that I did have success with out of all of this that you see here. So let's start with my favorite, 
Bare Minerals Prep Step SPF 50. This retails for $30 for 1.35 ounces. It contains 4.1% titanium dioxide and 23.8% zinc oxide. It also contains antioxidants and color adapting pigments. This is oil, paraben, and fragrance free. It's a very watery, slippery liquid. This is easy to apply and blend. It's really good at the hairline. It leaves a very slight whitish cast and is slightly luminous, but after 30 to 40 minutes, it does dry back to a non-slippery face feel. It can be worn on its own. It can be worn under powder and it can be worn under liquid. Applying a powder foundation over it, it did ball up and pill a little bit, and it did go on slightly more sheer than usual. The luminosity does show through the powder, but it gives the powder a lovely finish. With a liquid, it wasn't so good. It created polka dot pores and was streaky in a few areas, and the foundation goes on more sheer than normal, but it was within the realm of acceptability. A couple of other SPF 50s that were comparable from last year, the Exuviance. This is their sheer daily protector. This is an SPF 50 PA++++. It actually has a slightly smoothing effect to the skin. This looks great on its own. It's very wearable on its own. It's also very wearable under powder foundation. It was not great with liquid, but I would still wear it under some liquid foundations if I didn't need it to last for 12 hours. But this is my everyday go-to sunscreen that I love. I wanted to show you an option for this because this is quite expensive at $45. As it turns out, the same company that makes Exuviance, Neostrata, makes the exact same sunscreen. This retails for $27 for 1.7 ounces, so you could pick this one up. It's available on many, many less websites, but I'll put the links to all the sunscreens that I like below and so that you can go out and find it at a reasonable price. So my second favorite out of this year's batch was the Elta MD UV Physical SPF 41. This is water resistant to 40 minutes. It's a lightly tinted and for extra sensitive and post-procedure skin. It retails for $29.50 for three ounces, so a really great value. That's only $10 an ounce. This one contains 7% titanium dioxide and 9% zinc oxide with antioxidants. It's oil and paraben free. It feels a lot like a lotion going on. It's not greasy or silicone-y. It absorbed quickly. It leaves no white cast and no shine. So it is very wearable on its own. It's very nice under powder foundation. It goes on slightly sheerer than normal. The foundation that is goes on slightly sheerer than normal, but it looks nice. It's not good with liquid foundation though. It goes on smeary. It sits in pores, making the polka dot face. So after an hour, the makeup settles into wrinkles and slides around and starts to break up. But that was the case with just about everything. It feels a little drying later in the day in a few spots. It shortens the wear time of the makeup. So this might be better for people with uh, oil, skin on the oilier side since it is a little bit drying. For the SPF 30s this year, I didn't find anything that beat out last year's winner, which is the Hydropeptide, still my favorite in the SPF 30s. This one goes on beautifully. It doesn't leave a white cast. It doesn't get tangled up in your hair. Uh, this is the one that liquid makeup and powder makeup both went on well. It didn't affect the wear or the application on either. It is a great sunscreen. My only problem with it is that it's only an SPF 30. If they could make this in a 50, I would love to use it every day. But if you're looking for a less expensive option to that, um, I did try the MyShell Replenishing Solar Defense SPF 30. This is $28 for 2.3 ounces, so more in that $10 an ounce price range. I picked this one up at Whole Foods, I think. This is 13.5% zinc oxide, no titanium dioxide. It contains witch hazel, red algae, and sandalwood extracts, macadamia nut oil, it's made without GMOs, gluten, parabens, petroleums, phthalates, sulfates, ureas, artificial fragrances, and artificial colors, and it's vegan and cruelty-free. Now this was kind of a little bit thick and sticky feeling, although it does blend in well. It doesn't get tangled up in your hair. When it is all blended in, it doesn't leave any white cast and it doesn't leave any shine. It never really sets to like a dry feel, so it always feels a little tacky for the entire day, which I didn't love about it, but it did work really well under powder foundation, and like everything else, it didn't work great under liquid foundation. 
other SPF 50s that I tried that I didn't like as much, but that could be usable were the two products from Clinique. This one has been out for a while. This is the Clinique for men. This is $29.50 for one ounce. The women's product just came out last week. I ran down and got it to see if there was any difference. Looking at the ingredient label on these two, they are virtually identical ingredients. This one retails for $3 less. Hmm. They both work about the same. They don't go on perfectly. They do leave a white cast and quite a bit of shine. They worked fine under powder. It actually looked quite nice under powder makeup. So if you're a powder makeup user, um, you could really like these. But under liquid, it was like the same kind of, you know, slidey around, reduced the wear, settled in pores and settled in wrinkles kind of thing going on with these as well. Uh, and the other one, this is an SPF of 45. This is the Marini Physical Protectant. This is water resistant to 80 minutes. It retails for $51 for two ounces. It's 6% titanium dioxide and 8% zinc oxide with antioxidants, green tea and CoQ10 and glycerin, and it is paraben free. This is a gel-like lotion consistency. It spreads easily. It blends seamlessly, even around eyebrows and hairline. My face turned very red and very shiny, and this has a very funky smell. <laughs> but it doesn't feel heavy or greasy. My face flushing faded after a minute, and the shine definitely decreased after 20 minutes. With powder foundation, it went on really well. With normal coverage, it looked good. It covered up most of the shine. Liquid went on really sheer, smeary, streaky, settled into pores, settled into wrinkles, but looked fine from a distance. It became drying later on and the foundation broke up and was flaking by the end of the day. Two more SPF 50s that I wanted to mention, not in great detail. One is the MD Solar Sciences MD Cream Mineral Beauty Balm. This is an SPF 50. And the other one is Replenix Ultra Matte uh, Perfection 50 Plus. They both are mainly silicone. So if you love that silicone feel, these could be really good. They're both tinted sunscreen so you would have to get the right color and make sure it matches your skin tone but these both go on matte and are very very wearable on their own they look great on the skin they're actually a little bit smoothing but it never sets on the skin so it feels like it is slipping around all day and i hate that feel but if you love that feel these could be really successful sunscreens for you. I tried two sunscreens from Paula's Choice this year. These are both SPF 30. This is the one that I prefer. This one left my face very, very shiny. I didn't like it. The one that I did like a little bit better, this is Paula's Choice Resist Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense SPF 30. It's $32 for two ounces. This is 13% zinc oxide with some antioxidants. It's a lightweight tinted lotion. It goes on sheer and almost matte. It feels um, sticky and tacky even after 20 minutes, but it's very wearable on its own. The powder foundation goes on very nicely. It goes on normal. There was no balling or pilling, and it didn't accentuate wrinkles or pores, so that was great. It didn't work well with liquid makeup. It caused it to settle into pores and wrinkles. I'm looking back here to see what else I need to touch on. If you recommended any of these to me and I didn't love it, just remember, it could be the amount you're putting on, it could be my skin versus your skin. So here is a quick montage of everything that I tried that I didn't like with a photograph to show you why. So that is everything that I tested this year. I wish I had better news for you. I think the news would be better if I was using it in tiny amounts, but where I'm upping my use, it's making, again, mineral sunscreen very, very hard to find something that really works 100%, but I think these can be worked with. I think there's something in here that you can find. Again, the sunscreen that you are willing to use on a daily basis that doesn't make you feel greasy, shiny, or white is the one that you should buy, is the one that you should use, because of course sunscreen does you no good unless you get it on your skin. I hope you found it enlightening and informative and helpful. So thanks for watching everybody. I really appreciate your time and I will see you in the next video. So take care. Bye-bye.